they didn't let really anybody from the from Dallas defense ruin the game. Like Mike Parsons, did, he didn't ruin the game. Like um, I thought they protected well enough. I know Jalen took a couple sacks, but um, I mean they had they, they were three for four in the red zone. Had another great week this week, but my favorite guest, no disrespect to the others, is this man, John D. Filippo. Coach Flip, how you doing down there in Florida, my man? Rick, Tone, I love the Rutgers, and I busted something out for you guys today in honor of 6-0, and baby, in, in the bye week. I hadn't worn it in a while. Boom! Boom! And just wanted to represent and say how happy we are. We're 6-0 and with the bye week. We get rested up a little bit, get our mental game back. You know, and, and we'll be ready to face those uh, that, that other team out west, whoever their name is. I forget what their name oh, is. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I, I needed that kind of motivation here on my football Friday. Ooh, Coach Flip here bringing the heat like he does. Bring even it early, week. baby. Bringing it early oh, today. Man. Hey, we just you just missed uh, Coach Chung, by the way. I was trying to crisscross you guys and, and coordinate because he, too, wants to come up to the Ocean Casino Resorts. Uh, and we hey, got a with, with, his, now. with first round draft pick money, he he can <laughs> he can hang out at those teams, baby. He's got that first round draft pick money. Yeah, but not 1993 first round draft pick money ain't the same as 2022. <laughs> you know, uh, I I agree with that. And and but hey, man, he see I'm I'm up here in Northeast Florida. He, Eugene's down in Naples, man. He's down. In yeah, Naples. I know. You know, he's, uh, yeah, that's where <laughs> he's, he's living a good life. And you guys will be living a good life. I know out there on uh, November 12th, he was telling us the new date yeah. for the hub football platform for street free agents to get a look. Of course, Don Yee uh, hosting that event. And it was going to be in Naples, but because of that hurricane, it got shifted back out to California. Uh, I think San Diego or L.A. Yeah, I got to throw Hub a little bit of I got to throw Hub a little bit of a love here. They they um, I don't know if your viewers know this. They just signed a, a partnership with USFL as well. Yeah. So, um, which is any time to me as a coach or you're involved in something like this, like part of I love you know helping young men out and, and you know with the XFL coming in, the USFL playing, obviously the NFL. I, the more opportunities we can get people to play this great game, coach this great game, ref this great game, announce this great game. I think it's it's better for it's better for the United States of America because football the United Americans love football and the more football we have the better. Yeah, hey, sign me up. I'm going to be a Philadelphia Stars season ticket holder for the USFL. Man, they had 85 players from the Hub Football uh, get drafted in the USFL draft last year, and I, I give them I give them a lot of credit because really they're the first spring league to complete a spring season yeah. since the. Uh, USFL 1.0. A lot of a lot of organizations have tried to do it, but have failed. Yeah, no doubt, they, they they're doing a great job. So I'm I'm thrilled to be a small small part of it. Yeah, no, it's going to be a great opportunity, and I know Co Coach Norm Chow. Tell all the uh, folks I said hello. I unfortunately don't think I'll be able to make this one, uh, so we'll just have to await your presence in the great city of Philadelphia or Atlantic City. Either way is good for me. Um, speaking of which, it seems so long ago. Uh, with the Cowgirls game that was. And the Eagles, you know, they did what they had to do, Coach. Um, again, it's like, hey, we need to play the complete game. We blow the door off the hinges in the first half. Then we open it up back in for them to get back into the game the second half. Now, I will say, I won't let you say it. I'll say it. Cooper Rush is atrocious. <laughs> but – you know, it's going to be a close game. I think Dak Prescott is going to make a big difference. But what did you see with the Eagles and the Cowboys? I, I just saw efficiency. I mean, here's here's how I saw it. It was an efficient win by the Eagles at home. They didn't let really anybody from the from Dallas defense ruin the game. Like Mike Parsons, did, he didn't ruin the game. Like, um, I thought they protected well enough. I know Jalen took a couple sacks. But, um, I mean, they had – they, they were three for four in the red zone, uh, from what I re recall. Um, they only had two penalties. So, I mean, Dallas, I think, had 10 penalties. So they played an, an efficient game. And, you know, getting back to Cooper Rush, um, you know, Frank Reich, who's a friend of mine, would always tell me, Frank's one of the most humble dudes you'll meet. Not only is he a great Christian man, a good father, great coach, but he's, he is 
such he's very humble. And um, he would always tell me that, um, you know, John, I as a backup quarterback, Jim Kelly, for all those years, I could go in for three or four games and we'd be three and one, two and two. But he goes, if I had to get play much more than that, um, I, I kind of would start to get exposed a little bit and, and against the really good teams because I just did, I wasn't Jim Kelly. And I learned a lot from frankly said that I, I paused for a minute and just was like, wow, well, that's really, you know, humble for you to admit that number one. But it, I also put that story into what happened to Cooper Rush. You know, he, he's played some so-so teams, you know, I mean, the Rams going out to LA and beating the Rams, a great win. I'm not downplaying anyone in the NFL, but to play in those primetime matchup games on Monday night football in Philadelphia in a division game that means so much to that. It sometimes, it, the, the, you know, you can get overwhelmed. And it just looked like Cooper got a little bit overwhelmed. And it was a little bit of what I call the snowball effect. It just snowballed on him a little bit where the snowball going down the hill, it just kept getting a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, It would have been hard for anybody to come into that atmosphere and win that football game. But I just think when you have a – you're not playing with your QB1, I think after a while it, some some warts start to show a little bit. And yeah, I'm a Cooper, Cooper Rush fan, as I've said on the show. Like I think he, he yeah. belongs in the in the National Football League. He's just oh no question, yeah, no question. I I, I agree with that. But I I love the Frank Wright analogy because he did get somewhat exposed. He was forced to make plays. He was forced to throw the ball downfield, and he's not Dak Prescott. And right, nobody's asking him to be that, but he didn't play well. And right. so and, and they and the, you and I talked about this last week. In, in against the Eagles, he needed to make a few plays. Like in in the past few games, he had won. They didn't ask him to do a ton. Um, he needed right. to make some plays in this game. You got to, as a quarterback, you got to go on the road and play the Philadelphia Eagles. The length you got to make a few plays, and um, it just didn't happen. You know, Coach. Even though it was like thirty years ago, anytime I hear Frank Wright's name, I still think back to that. What was it like a thirty-eight point comeback? It was like the greatest comeback of all time. And Frank Wright orchestrated, and I, I and I believe Thurman Thomas was also injured in that game. Kenneth Davis. And Frank Wright rallied the troops. They were down like 40 points. I think it's the greatest comeback still to this day. It is. Uh, and I'll give your viewers, and I don't know if you know this, do you know Frank's also has the record for the biggest comeback in college football as well? I did not know that. Is that true? That's true. Well, I don't know if it's still true, but when I was in Philly, it was. At Maryland, He, I forget who they were playing. They were down a ton of points too, and, and they came back and won. So huh. Frank – at the time, I'd have to go back and check the stat book, but as of 17, when he and I left the Eagles, he had both records for the pros and college. Remarkable. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching the Bills game. Uh, I did not know that about the college record as well. So, you know, uh, it, 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 it makes sense because of the kind of person he is and the coach that he's gone on to become. And as you mentioned, the great human being and individual. I don't think I've had a chance to meet Coach Wright yet, but uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to do that now. Um, Jalen Hurts, not the prettiest game. You know, two weeks ago it was he doesn't throw enough touchdowns. This week he throws two touchdowns. Uh, he didn't throw the ball enough downfield. I mean, this guy can't catch a W, it seems like, in the media. 6-0. and oh. <laughs> That's and, what the know, quarterback's you know, judged off of is winning. Right. And that's and, the, and, that's and the most... he's and, and let's guys, I mean the defense played lights out. I mean, you know, the defense played lights out. I mean, three picks. I don't care who the quarterback is, getting three picks and, and, and getting the ball back for the offense. It was an incredible night for them. Um Jalen just keeps continuing to doing the things he needs to do to win. And and um, you know, the one throw I knew we wish he had back was the first third down of the game. He should have made that one. But other than that, I thought he I thought he played well and um like I said, I mean, the Eagles right now are a better team than the Dallas Cowboys, and he did not put the ball in harm's way. And, um, you know, the one RPO, they didn't block the guy. Um, where they had the bad play. I'm trying to go back in my mind. Like you said, it feels like it was about 20 days ago this game. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just replaying the game in my mind, some of the things that, um, you know, uh, I thought the throw he made to A.J. Brown where he was a threat to run, that was a great play. I'm just going back in my mind, replaying the game in my mind. But I mean, again, definition of efficiency and and, and um, guys playing great. Talking to Coach John D. Filippo of your World Champion Philadelphia Eagles, and I want to pick your brain, Coach, about 
you know, your mentality or your previous experiences heading into the bye week. We've heard what Coach Seriani said. They're going to do some self-evaluation, work on what they can improve, prioritize that list. I'm curious to get your opinion, though, because sticking on the topic of Jalen Hurts, we saw a $46 million quarterback last night in Kyler Murray. And I said earlier, to me, that's the starting point of the Jalen Hurts negotiation. And if you could get Jalen for the same deal, five years, $230 million, $190 million guaranteed, $46 million per year. I said, hey, that's going to look like a bargain by the time the uh, salary cap goes up. Yep. Do you agree or disagree with that? Well, I, I think, you know, we're what? We're a third of the way through, you know, uh, over a third of the way through if you're doing the direct math. Uh, I think the Eagles would be smart to let this season play out and, and see how it ends. But I'll tell you what, if, if this young man keeps playing like he's playing, he'll he'll end up getting a bigger contract than Tyler, for sure. Because he's playing better. I mean, he's he's playing as a top five quarterback in the National Football League right now. Well, top Ocean Casino has to you want to argue it. He's a top he's a he's a winning quarterback. So you gotta give him winning quarterback money. It's the way it goes. And yeah. uh, it's gonna be a lot if he continues to play like he is. And Ocean Casino has him number two now in the MVP odds race. So, I mean, there, there's Josh only Allen. Hmm? Next, Josh Allen won. Josh Allen, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think so. Uh, my question was going to be, do you think – I know they should let the season play out, but do you think that topic of conversation has come up during the bye week Absolutely. Here? Absolutely it's coming up. There, there, you you got it. This, these, these types of, of – of relationships, I like to call them, because whenever you give a young man at the club designates that amount of resources to a player, it is a true relationship. And the relationships, best relationships happen over time and they happen with trust. So I guarantee that I'm not sure who Jalen's agent is. Um, I'm sure whoever that uh, person is and how we have talked uh, for sure to get that thing started. And probably just, and I'm not a personnel guy, contract guy. I don't really, just from my observations in 15 years in the NFL, I'm sure both sides are talking about, hey, what's comparable right now? Who's Who Who are the next three or four guys up that are going to get a deal like this? Uh, where does Jalen rank with those guys? Um, so all those things have to be talked about between both parties um, before you can get a, a, a deal like that done. Uh, and it's just... Again, I've met Jalen just a few times. Uh, he seems very, very motivated to just keep doing the course and not be worried about those outside distractions, so to speak. Um, and, and I think that he's got the perfect mental mindset to to handle that situation. And because and, um, it's not easy when you know people are talking about your next contract. You're 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 right now. You're probably you not probably you are the best team in the NFC and, and arguably the NFL. And um, you know, and your con people are talking about your contract and, you know, the, the play, whenever you, you're about to get that type of money, the, the players look at you a little bit differently. The whole situation just changes. And, um, you know, not for the good, not for the bad, it just changes. And uh, it'll be interesting to see, like I said, if he, if he keeps playing this way, I mean, you're going to have to sign this guy to a long-term deal. He's those two guys are too hard to find. Yeah. Nicole Lynn from clutch sports management is his agent. She's a oh, relatively clutch. newer yeah, she's a relatively newer agent, but we had our good friend Neil Stratton on a couple weeks ago, and he explained that she recruits very heavily within the Alabama mm. program. And so a lot of Alabama players that could be coming out and thinking about signing with Nicole are watching this Jalen Hurts contract negotiation and what she does. Smart girl to recruit a bunch of Alabama guys. Easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah. Um. They might they, – see, that's the thing, though, with that negotiation. Like, Nicole is going to probably want to – like, if I'm her, I'm letting Lamar and Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow sign their deals because that's just going to be more money for Jalen. And if you're Howie, you're probably trying to get out in front of that and try to get a discount, right? So – And Howie – Howie's – Howie, you know, I've spoken very highly of Howie on this show. Howie's got a mind. He's always three steps ahead. He's always like – it's like a play caller. You're, you're always a player, too ahead thinking wise okay i'm gonna set this up and do this but how is that way in in the personnel side and he's as good as anybody i've been around it, it, it understanding the landscape of the league he sees what's coming down the road but you hit rick you hit it on the head this is all gonna be predicated around lamar 
I mean, because, I mean, you, you could say who's a better quarterback or this or that. I mean, Lamar's been the MVP. He's done it a long time. Not a long time, but a longer than Jalen. And there's been a little bit more sustained success there um, with with Lamar. So, Lamar, that that's a little bit of the wild card right now. Uh, on what he goes in, who knows how that's how that's going to go? Because you know, obviously, we all know he represents himself. So um, I'm sure he has people helping him and advising him. Uh, but uh, that that one's going to be interesting. Yeah, don't look right now, Coach. The wheels might be coming off the wagon there in Baltimore. They're signing JPP, Deshaun Jackson, uh, any veteran they can find to reinforce the squad. So we'll see if the Ravens get back on the rails. Uh, talking to Coach Flip of your world champion Philadelphia Eagles here on the football playbook. And so let's talk more about this bye week because we heard Coach Sariani and we heard from uh, Gannon and Steichen say, yeah, Coach gave us some uh, it's projects to do during the sure. bye week. And they're going to get together. They're going to present them as a coaching staff and talk about it and regroup and prioritize what they can improve upon. Is that kind of par for the course in terms of – your bye week experiences? Yeah, 100%. And, and there's two things you want to come out of a bye week and, and, and have a better sense of, of kind of where you're at is, is what do we do well, okay, in every area of situational football, first, second down, third down, red zone, short yardage, okay? And then how do other teams view us? So those are the two things that I always wanna, wanted to have an answer for in, in, in each situation was those two things. So you have some help with the analytical department giving you some tendencies to, to try, try to break. You know, there, you can work on those a little bit more. I don't know what Coach Sirianni did. I'll take your viewers through a normal bye week, of bye weeks I've been through. So you play the game on Sunday. The players come in on Monday um, and, and you watch the game. Now, I don't know if the Eagles are a Monday or Tuesday team off. I don't know. Um, but they were um, working on Monday. They were okay. Working. So you come in and I like, I like Tuesday off cause I like all days a coach to game plan. But anyway, that's another story for another day. Um, you come in, get to put the game to bed. Um, the players, come, you know, have Tuesday off. A lot of them will get a lift in on Tuesday. Some teams practice on Wednesday, then let the players go. You may have a few new things you want to get practice or, Hey, we're struggling on third down. We're struggling in third and seven to 10 right now. Hey, let's have a period of third and seven to 10. We're struggling in the red zone right now. Hey, let's get two periods of red zone in. So a lot of that's team specific on what, if you do bring your players in on a Wednesday, um, you work on. And then usually the players are gone. So they have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They're back on Sunday night, practice Monday, like a normal Wednesday practice. Then they're off Tuesday again, and then you're rolling. So the players, you have to give the players at least one day off. Um, and so usually for the coaches too, um, if when, once the players are gone, um, that's when you can really do your situational, um, you know, studies in terms of like, I've always been a, a red zone guy, most places I've coached. So I would have a whole presentation, boom, Hey, I'd have every drive in the red zone listed out. This is how it started. This is how we got the ball. This is how it ended. This is where our runs that were efficient in this drive. If we didn't score a touchdown, why? Okay, did we have a, 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 a mental error? Was it a drop pass? Was it an overthrown ball? Whatever. And you'd have the reasons why you weren't successful or you were successful. Hey, that was a great throw by Jalen Hurts, a great catch by A.J. Brown, a great run. Um, hey, we're really good at running the rub play. Like we were in 17 in Philadelphia with LeGarrette Blount, like down in the red zone. We were just great at running downhill people. So – those are the answers to the test you're trying to get. You have a feel for that, but you don't have the time during a normal game week to, 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 to study yourself as much as you have to study the, the opponent. Um, so those are the things that you, you do during the bye week. And, and like I said, I guarantee that the way that Coach Steichen and Coach Sirianni have the offense set up, that each position coach is responsible for, you're kind of the head coach of short yardage or red zone or third down or the run game. You know, Stout will have a whole breakdown on, hey, we're, we're really, we're not, I'm just throwing hypotheticals out there. Our transportation series runs aren't good. Okay. Which transportation series, usually when you toss the ball, your cabs, your trucks, whether it's two man surface, three man surface, all those things. So, um, Hey, either we need to work on it or we need to cut it out, not do as much of it. That's where you, that's, those are the answers that you, that, that you want. And, 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 I will tell you this, though. This is where you got to be careful on a bye week, okay? I'm not going to name names, and I hope I hope to, you know, who I wasn't one of them, but there were certain coordinators that I would 
not bet. I never bet on a game, but I would say to like a, a buddy on staff, I'd say, hey, they're this team's going to come out. They're going to they won't even score ten points in the, coming out of the bye week because they try to put too much new stuff in, that stuff you haven't done. So you got to be really the worst thing for for an NFL game is coaches having more time. Okay, because we'll we'll dream stuff up and we'll say we saw somebody do this and that fits to what we're doing this week. And the next thing you know, you haven't you get two reps on it in practice and it looks like absolute dog poop in the game. So that that's that's the fine line of of is a coaching staff as well is is okay. Let's let's just because we're six and zero and and we're doing this well doesn't mean we're not going to do it well next week. So I'm um, you know that's any team. And so um, that's kind of the the what you do in a bye week. But then the coaches usually have off, Rick. Uh, they're six and zero, oh, so I bet you they got Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. They Interesting. Deserve Interesting. Deserve okay. Hey, six and zero. Oh. You need some family time. Get back. I know Darius Slay said he can't wait to get home, watch his son play some high school football. Hasn't Absolutely. seen a game yet. Re- right? Reintroduce you yourself to your wife. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, hey, he's come home and shake my wife's hand and say, hi, I'm John. Nice to meet you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Coach John <laughs> Filippo here. We're running out of time, so I, I, I want to get your thoughts on some uh, uh, performances that impressed you last week. Yeah, you know what? We're Just like we said, wait, we're going to change a few things up. I, I, I'm i going to – I'm going to take the team route this week when, I, okay. when I'm going instead of the pl- single player route just to change it up a little bit. And I wrote down four teams. You're not going to like this, but the New York Giants, okay? They keep right. they keep doing what they're doing, and it's not pretty. And they are playing for that. They are playing for Brian Dayball. It is it is obvious. It just reeks on the tape that they love this atmosphere that they're playing in. So, and it's the who, same team except they have coaching and confidence. That's the that's only correct. Thing, right. And and they got a head coach that believes in them. I'm not saying the other guys didn't, but I just, there's something going on there right now. I know Mike Kafka very well as OC. I know I've worked with Don Martindale. OK, those are two fantastic coaches. Um, so kudos to the New York Giants. I'm going to throw out. I got a bunch of guys I coached with in Chicago last year. Huge win for the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday. Yeah. Okay? To beat San Francisco, a team that everyone's saying now they're trading for Christian McCaffrey. OK, you know, they're, they should be the, in the, you know, the NFC leader for the Super Bowl. Not so fast, my friend. Good job to the Atlanta Falcons and Arthur Smith. Marcus Mariota, by the way, NFC offensive player and, of the week. And. Okay, I sent this to my buddy Dave Ragone, who's the OC there. I'm going to throw another tidbit out there for you. I sent him a screenshot. The only quarterback in Super Bowl era to have a game with two passing touchdowns, a rushing touchdown, 140 passer rating, 90% completion percentage. Boom. You know, it's Good interesting job, because I, I was listening to uh, Stink, Mark Screlth, on that broadcast a little bit. Yeah. And you know how the you know they meet with the – players before the game and he said you know he spoke to Mariota and he said something that that caught his attention like when Mariota was drafted and he was making 20 million a year as the number one pick money he said he felt like he had to justify the status justify the money and he would go for the big splash play but after eating a slice of humble pie he goes you can't go broke taking a profit and he's watched Tom Brady dink and dunk and throw the ball 44 times a game and 12 passes in a row to the running backs. And a light bulb went off for Marcus Mariota. Absolutely. Thrilled for him. He's a really good, really, really nice kid too. Hey, all the question marks coming in before the season about the offensive coaching staff, you got to give the New England Patriots some dude, some credit now. I mean, to, to go into Cleveland and, and win that game in, in, you know, in, Really good fashion. Yeah, that was. They held Chubb and Hunt to under 70 rushing yards the week before they shut out the Lions. Oh, by the way, they got a kid in there, Bailey Zap, Bailey Zap. That's, that's and with a third string quarterback. I mean, if you're not careful when you go against the Patriots, like if you're Bill Belichick will take you to school. He will take you behind the woodshed and absolutely just, just take you to school. And that's the one game where you have to, you may have to put a few more new things in to, because the, they, they do, obviously, they do a great job. That's what I was saying. And then I'm going to end it on this one. Did I not say to call that game last week, the Jets-Packers game? You did. You called that. Yep. And that's another I team. I believe. That's another team that's playing with some confidence right now. But 
the quarterbacks that 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 situation is a little bit different. He's going to be a good player in my opinion, but they, they got to unleash him. They got to unleash Zach Wilson at some point. Like he's you know ten, 10 of 18, 14 of 21, 18 of 36 in that span of three games. He played one touchdown, two picks. Cool. Teams winning games are playing really good defense. I know Coach Sala wants wants to play that way. He's doing a great job. But it, um, I expect them to take the take the gloves off of Zach Wilson here in the next couple of weeks, and we're going to see some some good performances out of him. No, they played a complete game. Special teams, offense, defense, turnovers. I think they're going to really romp the Denver Broncos this week. That's just me. But, uh, Coach, we're up against it, man. We're running out of time. Uh, I appreciate it here. Anything else you want to get off your chest quickly before we let you, Boogie? No, I I, I, I will say this. I, I will say this. Um, I'm not going to get ahead of myself because remember now, we, right, we don't peak too soon in the show, right? We're, we're like this each week. We don't peak too yep. soon. That's right. But if you're a Philadelphia Eagles fan and you look at this schedule coming up, you're pretty excited where this team can go. That's all. Awesome. No doubt about it. One no week at a time, though. One more time. Flash that jewelry for us, Coach, on the way out. Man. There he is. Coach Flip, you'll be world champion, Philadelphia Eagles. Always appreciate the time. We'll catch you next week, okay? Sounds good, guys. Hey, have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy, uh, enjoy a pressure-free Sunday with no Eagles football.